So hello and welcome everyone to this talk about the design patterns. So I didn't expect that uh, too many people will come here to this talk. So, and this is my first uh, talk on the big conference like this. So bear with me, please. Okay, so let's start with a simple question. What are design patterns? And uh, one does not simply explain design patterns without the introducing the gang of four. So who is actually the gang of four? So those are the four authors of the book written about uh, 30 years ago uh, with the name Design Patterns, Element of Reusable Object-Oriented Software, which is like the Bible of uh, design patterns. But what design patterns are? Uh, so design patterns are the standard solutions to the common problems in the software design. So they represent the best practices that developers have refined over the time and offering the proven way to tackle reoccurring solutions uh, for uh, such a designs. So what is the purpose for the design patterns? The firstly, design patterns enhance uh, code readability. So by using the well-known patterns, we create a common language which the experienced developers understand and uh, this is kind of the shared vocabulary which makes it easier to teams to communicate ideas clearly and quickly. And when the developer sees the familiar pattern, they immediately understand uh, and see the purpose of the code, which is reducing the time needed for the understanding. Secondly, the design patterns promote code reuse. So patterns uh, provide kind of the templates or the blueprints for solving specific problems, which means you don't have to reinvent the wheel all the time you face a similar challenge or the issue. So by reusing the well-defined patterns, we can leverage some pre-tested solutions and uh, saving time and reducing the errors during the implementation. So this reuse leads to for more efficient code development process and uh, helps maintain the consistency across different parts of the application. And last but not least, the design patterns improve the maintain maintainability. So well-structured code is easier to debug, extend, and modify. Patterns encourage developers to think about the bigger picture and design systems that are flexible and adaptable. In summary, design patterns are invaluable tool in the developer's toolkit they provide standard solutions that enhance code readability, promote reuse, and improve maintainability. So we have uh, three categories or the types of the design patterns. So the first is the creational patterns. These patterns focus on the object creation mechanism. As an example of this design patterns category can be singleton, factory, holder, or the builder design pattern. Secondly, we have the structural patterns. Those deal with the object composition. As an example, it can be adapter, bridge, or facade. And last but not least, we have a behavior patterns. Those focus on the object interactions and the responsibility. Let's dive a little bit into the creational patterns. And here we have some characteristic of this category. So the they abstract the instantiation process and making uh, systems independent of the object creation, composition, and representation. They use inheritance to vary the instantiated class or delegate instantiation to the another object. These patterns offer flexibility in determining well, uh, you know, what, what gets created, who creates it, how it's created, and when it's created. And they also encapsulate and hiding the knowledge of the concrete classes used and hide the creation and assembly process of these instances. Let's start with uh, one of the most common design pattern uh, belongs to this category, which is a singleton. So what's the purpose of the singleton design pattern? It ensures that the class has only one single instance and provide the global point of access to that instance. Where we can use uh, such a design patterns, let's say we have some resource management, 
where we have, for example, the database connection, uh, what was the previous talk about. And we need to have the single you know, connection open all the time for the whole application. So we can use the single button here. Or let's say configuration setting, where we have the one single object per the whole application, where we can access our configuration values. Or it can be used in the logging, when the single logger is used by the multiple components of our application. So let's have a look at the structure of the singleton design pattern. So, as you can see, under number one, we have the singleton uh, class, which holds the reference to the instance itself. And it has some get instance method, which you can imagine is a method where we are checking if the instance already exists. If not, we are creating it. And if it exists, we just continue to return that value. I wanted to mention that I used this illustration from the refactoring.guru, which I really recommend you uh, to check out. It's a really very good source for the design patterns. So let's have a look at some Python example how to implement the singleton. So you can see we have a singleton class, which has the attribute underscore instance, which is set to the none by default. And we have overwritten the new method for the uh, creation of the, our instance, where we are checking if the class already has the instance. If not, it's creating it and then returning back to the user. And as an example of the usage, you see we are creating singleton one and singleton two, and then if we do some comparison, uh, we see that it's the same object. I just wanted to mention that uh, it was also on the previous slide. Uh, when you use uh, thread, th threading in your application, you should handle the locking here, because otherwise you can get to the situation that uh, these two objects will be different. Second design pattern of this creation design patterns category can be abstract factory. This provides an interface for the creating the families of the related dependent objects without specifying their concrete classes. It's ideal for the systems that needs to be independent of how uh, their products are created. As an example, it can be UI frameworks supporting multiple teams or UI components or different teaming libraries and manufacturing systems and so on. So if we have a look at the structure of this design pattern, so on the left side, you see we have some product interface defined. This is kind of a blueprint which defines what all products should look like and any product created by the system should follow this kind of blueprint. Then above and below under the number two, you see we have some concrete product. So those uh, are the actual products that are created and each of these following the product interface, but differing in the specific details. Then in the middle, you see we have the abstract factory class or the creator class. This class has a method for creating products and this product method return the type which is matching the actual product interface. Uh, the creator class focuses on the business logic and the factory method helps to separate the logic from the details of the creating specific products. And then uh, under number four, above and below, you see we have some concrete creators. These subclasses of the creator class provide their own specific way of the creating of these specific products. And then you can see on the number five on the right side, we have the client code. The client code remains flexible and independent of the specific product variants as it's communicate with the objects via the abstract interface. If we have a look at the example uh, in the Python code, you see we have some abstract UI objects like the button and the checkbox. Then 
we can have just some concrete implementation of these objects, like the Linux button and Linux checkbox. And for the Windows, we have the Windows button and Windows checkbox. Then we define some abstract factory, which is called, let's say, GUI factory, which defines our abstraction for the creation of these objects, like the create button and create checkbox. And then we have the concrete factories, which actually follows this interface of the abstract factory, uh, which is called, let's say, Linux GUI factory and the Windows GUI factory, which creates uh, these objects, buttons, in that specific way, creating that specific uh, concrete product, like uh, Linux button, Linux checkbox, Windows button, and Windows checkbox. And then we have some client code. Let's say we have the create GUI method or the function, and it takes the factory as a parameter. So then we are creating the button and checkbox object just by calling the factory create button, which is already well-defined interface which your client understand and expect. And then uh, on the right runtime of the, of the application, you see uh, we don't know yet the operating system. Yeah? We are checking what's currently running platform. If it's a Linux, we are setting the factory, let's say, for the Linux GUI factory. And then using that specific factory or the Windows, if we are running on the Windows, and creating the instances of our button and checkbox object via our create GUI uh, function. So the second uh, category of the patterns are the structural patterns. So the structural patterns uh, have some characteristic, like the composition. So those patterns emphasize how object and classes can be combined to form a larger, more complex structure. Interface simplification, structural patterns often focus on the defining straightforward and efficient interface for the complex subsystem, and uh, this makes the interaction more manageable. And uh, flexibility and extensibility, uh, they provide a mechanism to extend uh, existing structures without altering their original code, thus supporting the open-closed principle. And, of course, encapsulation and uh, abstraction. This pattern encapsulates detailed implementation and abstract the interactions. So let's have a look at the uh, first uh, design pattern from this category of the structural design patterns, which can be adapter, or which is adapter. Uh, the adapter design patterns allow the object with the incompatible interface to work together by providing something called a wrapper. It's uh, converting the interface of a class into the another interface that client expects. Imagine you are traveling abroad and uh, from the US to the Europe, and you have a charger for your laptop. So then you cannot probably connect it directly to our uh, electronic outlet here. So you need to have some middle guy, the adapter, so which is basically the same principle here. As an example where we can use this pattern can be the integrating the legacy code with the new system, or when we need to working with the different data formats, or again, some cross-platform development. So if we have a look at the structure of the design pattern. So we have client under the number one, which is the code that uses the client or the target interface to interact with the objects, and it remains unaware of the specific implementation details of the adaptee and the adapter. So then under number two, we have a client or target interface. It defines the interface expected by the client, which the client understands to. It represents the set of the operations that the client code can use. And then on the right side, you see we have the service. This service is, can be called also as adaptee, and which can be the existing class or the system with some incompatible interface that we need to integrate to our new system. And then in the middle, 
we have that mentioned adapter. Adapter is a class that implements the client target interface, which a client understand and internally uses and as an instance of the adaptee to make it compatible with the client target interface. So let's have a, some example how it can use. Yeah? So we have some user as a client and we have some printer interface. So user would like to probably print something, some data. Then we have some adaptees, which can be, let's say, laser printer or the inject printer. And then we need to make the client to be able to communicate to uh, those two different uh, printers. So let's say we define the laser printer adapter, which has a reference to the laser printer and speak with the same language, the client interface, which is well defined, and calling its method, print data. This print data method can do something to prepare the data for the laser printer and then call the print laser method uh, from the object of the laser printer. If we have a look to this example written in the Python code, you can see we have some adaptee uh, like the inject printer and the laser printer. Each of these have the different methods like the print inject, print laser, and doing something, printing. And uh, we have some target interface for a printer. So you see this printer interface has a well-known method by the client, print document, and it needs to be implemented by any other concrete adapt adapter. So let's say we have the inject printer adapter, which has a reference to that specific uh, object of our adaptee, in this case inject printer. Then it implements the print document and uh, doing some magic with the data, for example, to prepare it for the inject printer and calling that print inject method, uh, sending the data in the right format for the printer. And the same we can do uh, a little bit differently for the laser printer. Okay, uh, if we have a look at the client code, how it can be used. So we have some user which needs to have the, you know, uh, know about the specific printer which needs to use, which is in our case will be our adapter and it will just call the print document on that adapter. And that's it. So in the example you see, we need to make an object of our printer's adapter and then just use it. Now another design pattern from this category can be the bridge design patterns. So some basic characteristic of the bridge design patterns, it separates an object abstraction from its implementation so that they can vary independently. Uh, it's useful when, when the both of the abstraction and the implementation needs to be extensible independently. As an example, it can be used again in some cr cross-platform development or let's say again, some example from the database abstraction where we need to support the communication to different type of the databases, let's say. Or some device control systems. If we have a look at the structure of the bridge design pattern, you see we have the definition on the number one of our abstraction, which has a reference to our specific implementation. And it provides some features, feature one, feature two. Then we have some specific implementation, which is a different methods, method one, method two, method three. And under the number three, so you see that we can have specific concrete implementation. And under the number four, we can even have refined abstraction, which provides some additional feature. So let's have a look at some example of the, let's say, remote control and that we need to let's say, communicate with some devices. So as our abstraction can be the remote control and it holds the reference to our specific device. And it has some features like the toggle power, the red button on the remote control, which turn on or turn off the, 
TV, for example, volume up and volume down. Then we have some interface for the device, which implements own method how to do the things, like the power on, power off, set volume to some specific level, and so on. Then we have the concrete implementation, like the TV or the radio, and then we can have some advanced remote control, which provides some additional feature, let's say mute button, which if you, if you press, that it will call on that specific device, the method from the device, which will be, for example, set volume to zero. Yeah. So, last category of design patterns are the behavior patterns. Those define the uh, patterns of the communication between objects. Those focus on how objects interact and distribute responsibilities. It encapsulates the behavior in classes and promoting the flexibility and reusability. It also facilitates the changes in behavior without need of the altering of the existing code. So as an example of this design pattern category, behavioral, so we can have the, for example, observer. It defines one too many dependency uh, between the objects so that one object, if it's changed its state, all its dependents are notified and updated automatically. So it's used in the implementing event handling system mostly where a change of the state uh, of a model notifies and updates the other objects. As an example, it can be used in some event handling GUI applications or real-time data feed systems or the logging and monitoring systems. As a structure uh, of these design patterns, you see under number one, we have some publisher, which holds the list of our subscribers. And uh, it has some its own main state. And then it provides some method for the subscribing or unsubscribing, and then have some notify subscriber methods and some other main business logic. So then under number three, you see we have some well-defined interface for the subscribers, which a subscriber understand and needs to implement. So under number four or five, you see we have some concrete subscribers uh, definition. Let's say imagine the application uh, which needs to notify its user, it can be via email, so it can be one kind of the subscriber, or if we have a mobile application, it can be uh, the pop-up window which will appear in our uh, cell phone. And uh, if the change of, or if the state will change of the publisher, then you can imagine under number two that we basically loop over the subscribers and calling the update method, which is a well-known defined uh, interface which each of the subscriber needs to implement in its own way, and providing some reference to the publisher which holds the, some data which the subscriber can use. And uh, last, uh, design pattern uh, is uh, strategy. It uh, defines a family of the algorithm which encapsulate each one and makes them interchangeable. So this allows the algorithm to vary independently from the clients that use it. And uh, one of the use case, uh, it can be used in the payment processing system where the different payment methods like the credit card or the PayPal uh, can be selected and interchanged at the runtime without altering the client code. So another example of the usage can be the sorting algorithm, for example, when the user needs to pick up a specific algorithm to sort the data, or the compression algorithm, which user can pick if it will using the zip or the gzip or the tar or whatever. And if we have a look at the uh, structure of the strategy design pattern, you see under the number one, we have some context, which again holds some reference to our specific strategy. 
and has some method like the set strategy uh, and then can do some operation with the do something method. Then on the right side you see we have the strategy interface defined which has the execute method and taking the data as an argument. And then we have some concrete implementation of the strategy. As we mentioned already, the payment system. So it can be, let's say, pay by card or pay by PayPal or pay by Bitcoin. And then we have the client, which basically uh, setting our context and uh, setting that specific strategy there and calling do something operation, which at the end, calling the execute method passing the data which the strategy should understand and do the operation for us. Yeah, and uh, that's it. So thank you very much. Yeah, thank you, Peter. Uh, actually, yeah, we have a little time for a Q&A. I'm sure a topic like this invites many questions. There are many people here in this overflow room. Does anybody have a question and want to step up towards the microphone? Don't be shy. Many people here. Of course, obvious question is, do you have something like a favorite pattern that you like to use all the time? I think that uh, mostly singleton or the factory, factory method, not that abstract factory, but you can evolve by uh, using the factory method to the abstract factory later on as well. So those are like the most common which I'm using. But uh, yeah, I think that it's uh, good to know about these design patterns in general. And if you are developing the application then you see some you know, problem which you already maybe saw, it was tackled in the design pattern to have a look to concrete implementation and to use it. Yeah. Yeah, it's always the thing. Of course, a favorite pattern doesn't really make sense, right? A pattern has its use and, you know. Okay, uh, there are no questions. I think people are just shy to ask. Would you be available for some, like, small group discussion? Maybe we can, we can switch it for a few minutes. You can yeah, continue yeah. here. I'm sure there are some reach people. Reach me out. Something. Uh, exactly. Or coffee break or whenever. Exactly, and you have your uh, contact here. You can also, as a reminder, for those of you, even for the ones who are remote, uh, ask questions in the channel for this room, which is Terrace 2A, and I'm sure you will probably at least take some time to read there today yeah. if there are questions. All right, okay. let's ask a, a speaker again. Thank you.